And what makes the heart good? It's not that you never do anything wrong. It's not that you never have bad thoughts. What makes the heart good is when you keep it soft and when you ask God to heal it where it's broken and you protect it because nobody else is going to protect it better than you can. Even your parents, they can't watch over your heart. It says in Proverbs 4.23, like I said earlier, watch over your heart. I, I can't watch over your heart. You have to watch over your heart. You can't watch over my heart. I have to watch over my heart. We're all individually responsible for what seeds are planted in our heart. Like, I'm talking, to, I'm talking to you now like if you were my kid. That's how I'm talking to you. Like, if you were my kid, what would I say to you? I would say your heart is the most powerful manufacturing center in the universe. It's the most powerful thing in the world. But you are the only one that can decide what is manufactured from your heart based on what seeds you allow. So it's not about good or evil. It's not about I shouldn't watch TV, that's wrong. I shouldn't watch our movies, those are bad, those are wrong. Those are, those are blah, blah. It's not about right or wrong. It's about what produces a good harvest. Don't live your life based on, on is it sinful or is it not sinful. You live your life based on is this going to produce a good harvest in my heart or a bad one? And you know how you can determine that. It, you know. You know right away if it's a good seed or a bad seed. What is it like now? Is it it's bad? It's going to be bad. It's just going to be bigger, badder and bigger when you, get, when you plant it in your heart. It's really simple. Make good choices of what you let into your eyes, what you let into your ears, and what you let into your, you know, out of your mouth. Those are the gates into your heart. They're gates. Your eye is a gate. It's a gate. Your eye's a gate. Your ear's a gate. You open it, and stuff gets in it. You close it, so stuff can't get in it. You open it when you want somebody in. It's like if you lived in a gated subdivision, then you don't let anybody in unless you want them in. That's how you got to be with your heart. Your heart needs to become a gated subdivision. It needs to be a gated community in your heart. And you are the one who determines which, what you, who you let in and what you let in. I know I'm saying this over and over again, but I'm trying to find so many different ways to say it so that you get this, that if you want revival, if you want God to be great in your life, if you want God's will for your life, if you want the best life that God created you for, if you want joy, if you want happiness, if you want to have the best friends and the, and the best future, take control of your heart. Because that's where seeds are planted. That's where dreams are. Come, come from. That's where God puts dreams. So if your heart's broken, God will put a dream in there and it'll spill out. That's why you got to let God heal it from the betrayal, from the rejection, from the disappointment, from the failures that you've experienced, from the defeat. Okay, does this make sense? Okay, it really makes, it really makes sense. So, so, so how can we practically live this out? Like every day, what do you got to decide? Just like if you were in a, if you were, I mean, you can use any analogy, you can use any example. You can use the example of when you go into a building downtown Chicago. If you walk into an office building downtown Chicago, there's a guard there. And you have to, you have to, you have to sign in or you can't get up to the 75th floor or the 85th floor or the 100th floor. You can't get up there without going through the, the reception or the, the check-in. You got to check in. Uh, you know, when you go on an airplane, they have to look at your ticket. They decide. They're the gatekeepers of whether they let you on the plane. If, the, if your, if your uh, driver's license doesn't match, what do they say? I'm sorry, you know, you can't get on this plane because your driver's license doesn't match your ticket or you don't have a ticket. They are in control of who they let on the plane. And you want them to, you want the, the 
the airline to determine that. You don't want anybody who just wants to get on your plane, get on your plane. They have to pay a ticket. They have to be approved. They have to be somebody that's safe. They have to go through the metal detectors. They have to go through all that stuff just to determine if they're safe to get on the plane. Think about that. That's just to get on a plane. And a plane is not nearly as powerful as your heart is. So how much more should you be the TSA agent of your heart? You've got to be the airline agency of your heart. You've got to be like, oh, sorry, I've got to make sure that you have a pass. I've got to make sure that you're good for my heart. I've got to make sure you're safe. I've got to make sure that you're good. I've got to make sure that you have a ticket. I've got to make sure that you've paid the fare. I've got to make sure that you are the kind of person that I want in my heart. I got to make sure you're the kind of thought I want in my heart. I got to make sure you're, you're the kind of vision I want in my heart. I, I got to make sure. Like nobody can make sure of that for you except you. At your age, you have complete power to determine your future. How old are you? 18. You have complete control of your future based on what you do about watching over your heart. How, how, old, how old are you? 15. Guess what? You have complete control over your future based on what seeds you allow planted in your heart. You have complete control. Don't let somebody tell you you're not in control of your life. You're not in control of your future. You have complete control of your future based on the seeds you allow into your heart. And bad stuff's going to happen to everybody. But it's not about whether something bad happens. It's what are you going to allow into your heart when that bad thing happens? Are you going to trust God? I'm only going to allow trust. I'm only going to allow God's promises in my heart when bad things happen. That's how, that's how I live. I don't live it perfectly, but that's how I live. Only the promises of God are entering this heart. No, anybody else makes a promise to me, I don't let it in my heart because I'm going to be disappointed because they're going to break their promise many times. Let your heart be completely trusting in God and his promises And you'll never suffer from a broken heart for very long. Because when your trust is in people, they'll break it. But when your trust is in God, he'll put dreams in it. God's going to give you a dream for your life. But you got to plant the right seeds to see the dream come to pass. So who's in control of your heart? Say, I am. How much control do you have over the outcome of your life? 100% complete control. Nobody else. How many people can you blame in the future for how you end up in life? You can blame one person, yourself, right? That's it. Nobody else. And you're going to be tempted to, believe me. You're going to be tempted to. You're going to be tempted to blame your parents, tempted to blame you know, your boss at work or somebody at school, you'd be tempted to blame. And you have to remember, wait, I, I'm in control of what seeds I let in my heart. Okay, it's a simple truth. But the reason I'm spending so much time explaining it to you is because it's the most important thing that I've ever learned in my life is that I am the keeper of my own heart. 